YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I am building the fuel system on my 7M, and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing, products I'm using, how I'm writing my lines, all that sort of stuff, and I am so excited because this is one of the few things I have left to do before I can get this engine off the stand, onto the dyno, remote tuned, cam broken in, and then get it into the car. So really seeing the light at the end of the tunnel right now and also super stoked because I just got a whole box of goodies for building this. I'm just so excited to take you along for the ride. So let's get right into it. Now that I have my fuel pressure regulator installed, let me start talk about where I'm at right now and then tell you where I'm gonna be going. First of all, this is the same fuel pressure regulator that I had on my previous engine build, but this is like, you know, the, the newer version. And of course, this beautiful, clear, new sight glass. There's nothing wrong with my old one. I'm gonna keep it and use it on the engine that I'm building for 88. But, uh, you know, I just sort of wanted bright, new, shiny, and everything looking great because you know, this engine build. <laughs> I don't have to justify myself, okay, people? On this side of the fuel pressure regulator, I have my fuel pressure sensor. This is obviously gonna be communicating with the AEM Infinity. Yes, I've got the stock fuel rail, which is totally sufficient. I'm also using my stock fuel damper, which is awesome to sort of just chill out the pulses that are gonna be coming from the fuel pump. You can see I've got some fittings here. I've got a little 6AN that I'm gonna have Danny weld onto this side. This is actually gonna be the return side. And I'd like to make a hard line going from here into the regulator. I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do there yet, but stay tuned in this video. I'm sure I'm gonna show you. And then this is gonna be my return. And then and this side we've got, you can see on the fuel damper, I'm actually just using this stock banjo. I didn't really wanna cut anything down. This has like some really specific threads. I honestly just didn't really know what else to do. I could weld it and like re-thread it to something else, but really I'm just like, well, this is fine. And if it goes bad, I can just replace it with a, a new used one, you know, one of my many other replacement parts. So what I did instead was I cut the line and I'm going to have Danny weld this hole shut, um, or I think because of the type, it's brazing, but I'm not sure. Uh, and then, of course, I just got my seals. So just installing this like it would be, keeping that little tab on so that when I tighten it, it doesn't rotate around. It's going to look fine. I'll get it powder coated or something like that. And then over here for my fuel in, I've got this weldable 6A and bung. I'm going to pull out the plug that's here, have Danny weld that in place, and then this is going to be my fuel in. One thing I'm always concerned about because the engine really sits so close to the firewall is, you know, I don't want this to stick too far out, but now that I have everything in my hands, I can see that this isn't even coming to the end of the cylinder head, so this is going to be awesome. And of course it rotates, so no matter where that fuel line is going to end up coming in, it'll be totally fine. And then I'm not going to be using my cold start injector, so uh, instead of just plugging this, I'm just going to weld it and then sand it nice and flat and make it look really nice. So that is the plan. And now I'm going to hop into action. fuel rail and actually a nice fuel rail. It is a nice fuel rail.
right, a month and a half later, <laughs> actually a little bit more since I last filmed and worked on this video. That is how long it took for the powder coating shop to powder coat my parts. And I, I don't know what to tell you guys. I was so excited to show you everything and get everything installed. Instead, I spent, I don't know, about like a half an hour gathering myself so that I wasn't in tears in this YouTube video. So I got stuff back and I don't know, you guys, I don't even know where to start. I'm really bummed because my old powder coater that I used to go to for everything ended up shutting down to go back to driving truck, good for him. And I had to find someone new and I found someone that had like really good reviews online and I went and met them personally and introduced myself and told them how important the car was to me, how it was gonna be a show car. I've got a pretty decent sized budget to make this perfect. And my powder coated parts are not perfect. And the reason why I decided to, I'm not gonna tell you what this place was, and I'm not here to throw anyone under the bus, but the point of the story is to show you that like, it doesn't matter who you are, how nice you are, 500 bucks for these parts, doesn't matter how much money you spend, bad work can happen to anyone at any time. Where the heck is this gonna go? Right on top, right on top of the engine that I have put everything into. And now keep in mind too, I, I had high expectations of these people because they are professionals, they are in business. I had a friend of mine who started a brand new powder coating business do these. And they're flawless. They're flawless. I mean, I wouldn't have done the ribs, but I don't even care. Like, it, it'll wear off over time if it needs to. The belt will be up. But, like, this is what an amateur can do. Imagine what a professional can do. See, a month, a month and a half. And then when I reached out to these fellows and let them know, like, hey, there's a lot of dirt underneath the powder coat and someone did a really bad job taping this. The powder is super uneven. It's really thick in some portions and really thin in other portions. After telling him, like, this is my beloved car. I've been working on for a decade. I want it to look amazing. And this is right on top. The fuel rail and the intake manifold are right on top. I like completely reiterated a million times over how important it was for this to be perfect. And then like just now in text message, she was like, oh yeah, yeah, we put our new employee on that. Cool. What an insult. <laughs> what an insult. I told you, like, you, you don't put your brand new employee on something when a customer walks in, is willing to pay the price, is willing to wait over a month and a half for a show car for it to be done perfectly. What insult. And you saw this, I showed this to you what it looked like when I dropped it off. I had cleaned it and I had sandblasted all of it. This person is a professional. I mean, I think I could have done a better taping job. And then this wasn't even coated. It was just left in the box. So I asked him, I was like, hey, what, what happened with this one? Is it just like something that you couldn't coat? He was like, oh no, we couldn't figure out a way to hang it. You're professionals. All right, so fine, I'll do this one and I'll make a tutorial on how I'm going to hang it and coat it. I'm gonna learn how to powder coat people. So an hour and a half later, and I cleaned out all the excess from all the injector holes, every single one. I test fitted an injector. This is obviously an old one and just made sure that it sealed and it did. Also chamfered and cleaned out the threads of every single one of these little bolt holes because as I'm sure you noticed, there was powder coat down in them, and so bolts will not go in them. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do at this point in terms of how I'm gonna save this. I think what I might do actually is instead of taking all the time to strip it all the way down, I think I'm gonna do some art on this and put a clear coat over it and um, just save myself a ton of hassle of stripping it all the way down. Cause powder coat's really hard to get off. It's, um, Danny was saying that he has some like aviation paint stripper, which is insane. And you pretty much just lay it on and then wait, <laughs> wipe it off, lay it on. And it's just a really long process. And I've already wasted over a month and a half waiting for this just to have it get to this point. So I'm not sure I wanna waste a ton more time on it. I kind of really just wanna drive the car. So that's where we're at right now.
assembled. I wish that I could say that I was less disappointed. However, you will see that a good portion of the impurities are right out in the open where they're gonna be seen. So truth be told though, I was planning on doing some art on this made of fold like I've already told you guys, and I was going to remove it before installing this into the car. I'm actually thinking about potentially dropping the subframe and actually installing the engine and transmission from below just to make my life a little easier. So obviously this is gonna have to come off anyway, and I was just gonna run it on the dyno as is, then when I had to remove this anyway, do my art and then put a clear coat over it anyway with powder coat. So for now, I'm just gonna install it and continue moving forward. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna remedy the situation, whether I'm gonna strip this all the way back down and redo the fuel rail in black, or maybe I'll do some creative etching or something, some way to hide that, but. Yeah, super bummer, super bummer. Like I said, um, it would have been great if at the very beginning when I dropped off these parts and told the powder coaters my intentions, told them like, hey, these have to be perfect. This is for a show car. Are you guys up to the task? And they came across so confident and it instilled confidence in me in them. So I will, however, give you guys an update. I got a text message back from them saying that they are going to rip up my check. So we will, I guess we'll just wait and see if that is the case. And then um, they texted me back and said that they did not think that I was the customer for them. Fantastic. I wish I had known that two months ago when I first talked to them. It would have been totally cool if they said, you know what, we're a great production shop. However, we do not specialize in perfectionism or like really high-end work. That would have been great. I just would have loved to know that from the beginning. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned. I will obviously have to do a part two of my fuel system video so you can see what the final result will be, but that's fine because I'm also gonna have to do a part three and show you guys the fuel system, you know, in the tank and the lines that I'm running there and the fuel filter and stuff that I'm using up to the engine. So, all right, this is exciting. It just means that there's more to come. All right, thanks so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye. That, that's mom's drink. That's mom's. That's not good for chickens. Except that, yes, I do need all these chickens. I need them. Cutie!